I hope this thing works. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't used it in Oops. over a year. Yes. So you've just got everything inside. Oh, good. Do you have everything? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, power cables, the spray bottles, electrical cable. Mm -hmm. Should be the same same size. Let's try. Wait, we have to test to see if it works first. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Where? Oh, there. Just plug it okay. in. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, yes. The light. We should check before the egg arrives. Yeah, <laughs> it arrived today, so yeah. we have to do it today. Whoa! So oh, cute, nice. small. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this. Wow, the, all the different colors. Wow, this is blue. Yeah. Different spots. It's so oh, cute. Really perfect. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. This is going to be a very busy week. We have so many projects that we need to get done this week. One of the new things that we're gonna start is that we got our quail egg delivery today. Ta-da! We're gonna do quails this season as well, besides our chickens. Mm. Over the last month, our supplier has been collecting the quail eggs. We got 100 eggs. We're gonna start to incubate them. We're not gonna show you the whole incubation process and how it works. Mm because we did that in a video when we did the chickens last year. It's pretty much the same process. The only difference is, is the temperature and the humidity. That's a little bit different. Plus the quail eggs apparently go for about 18 days. 18 days is normally mm. the incubation time the where chicken chickens are about 21 days. 21 days yeah. We have a hundred quail eggs. So hopefully if we have about a 50% success rate or more, that gives us 50 quails. Perfect. The quails are gonna be for meat birds and for eggs. So that's gonna provide us with extra food for our homestead. Yes. We're also gonna be starting all our seeds this week. It is the beginning of February. Fortunately, because we have a winter greenhouse, which is warming up very nicely at the moment, we should be able to get our seedlings out there about the beginning of March. Mm. That's the way it looks at the moment, which is really exciting, which means that we can predominantly start growing our seeds now. We will start some seeds in a couple of weeks for the ones that are gonna go outside. Let's crack on, let's get these eggs in the incubator. First we need to clean up everything, then we'll get the eggs in and we'll get this started. Yes, it's like flame, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's, let's clean up. Egg turners. <laughs> So what Zula is doing now is she's just cleaning off the eggs. Then we're going to put them in. This incubator is for 64 chicken eggs, but of course quail eggs are a lot smaller. <gasps> okay, that's one gone. Sorry. Oh, then we've got five extra. <laughs> <laughs> one egg broke. <laughs> Shame. We don't know exactly how many eggs we can fit in here with quail eggs. This is the first time that we have done quail. Of course, me being a chef, I have cooked quail before and I have cooked quail eggs. So it is really going to be fun for me to experiment <laughs> with that. And I don't I, have any experiment no like experience. that. Really, really fun. Be careful! Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've lost the one already. <gasps> Two. <laughs> this gave us five extra. Oh, shame. I killed it. <laughs> wow. You wow. <gasps> mean who? It's, it's small eggs. It's a blue egg. Wow, look. You mean who? Look at look. Egg. Poop. Poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poop egg. Egg. Cute. Baby. No, baby, baby eggs. Baby eggs. Oh, really nice colors. Mm. My chef brain is already coming up with recipes. <laughs> you have like poached quail mm. eggs. Oh. I was actually starting to think of the house look cute. 
they are coming little, out. Little baby, baby fried eggs. <laughs> but pretty much the same as normal eggs. So if you have a normal egg, so you just substitute three quail eggs for one egg oh. in, in your recipes. Mm. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is broken too. Really? Mm. Oh, no. That's the really? last, last year. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. so we have all our quail eggs in. Yes. Unfortunately, they were a bit of casualties on the way. <laughs> Look at this. Look at all the eggs. Oh, sit. Wow. wow. <laughs> Gonna have lots of little babies, huh? Wow. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, baby egg. Bye bye, egg. See you. See you. See, see you. you in 18 days. Bye bye. Egg. Bye bye, bye, -bye egg. egg. So we got all our quail eggs in. We're going to go put this in a safe place so flame can't get to it. We're going to keep the eggs at around 37 degrees, between 37 and 38 mm -hmm. degrees. We are going to keep this at a humidity level of about 50% over the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. This great thing is it has an automatic turning, so we don't have to worry about anything. It will automatically turn it, and then we'll let it run for 15 days, and then we will turn the automatic turning system off and just let them be until they start hatching. Really, really simple. We just need to figure out a place to put them when they do hatch, but we'll come up with something next week. Yeah. Let's get this on and then we're gonna see what seeds we're gonna plant this year. Yeah. 18 days. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> What's that? Oh, you see that, Chimiko? A dog. Dog, yes. Yeah, they give them the milk. Yeah, the this is the shelf that we have for all our seeds out here a little bit in the countryside of Mongolia. The problem is keeping the right temperature. These uh, red lights are kind of old technology, but these are the only ones that were kind of available here in Mongolia. And the other ones are a lot more expensive. When you do germinate your seeds, it's not necessary to have them under light. But we do have them under light because the temperature of the house is not warm enough. We want to keep that at a certain temperature. The lights just help us have a temperature control and we can cover everything up. We have some herbs going here. I also got some nice Japanese bananas. That's another long-term project. I have some artichokes down here because we have a greenhouse. It's really nice. We can grow artichokes. And then I have lots of herb cuttings that are growing and different types of herb cuttings. So we need to fill this up. We've been just trying to work out exactly how many seeds of everything that we can plant to use the space as effectively as we can. Yeah, so it's a lot of variety, mm. but it's good. I think that we, we have just about everything that we want to do yeah. this, this seems spring. Like, yeah, seems like we have a good stock mm. for this season. Just if we yeah. can <laughs> have <laughs> just have the space to put it all. Yep. If we do what you suggested and do some the different stages, mm. then we'll be able to get this out to the greenhouse as soon as possible. Yes. So that's good. But least good thing that we have a greenhouse done. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Last year we like started planting everything. Yeah, we are so really no, struggled. No, yeah. no greenhouse to put it. For so space there are some and problems. yeah. Okay. Hopefully we don't have any that problem for this season. Good. I'm glad we got our quails started this morning. So that is now out the way. We can start focusing on planting all our seeds for the spring. Yes. Last couple of hours, we go through all that what we have. Seems like it'll be planned. So we need to just get to start our seeding. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we have done some planting before, but we've never done something to this scale, especially with this amount of varieties. So we are going to make mistakes. Some things will work, some things will won't work, but we have been going through what we have done before, what we know works, mm. and if there's something new that we haven't done before, we've been doing going to Google, seeing everything we know about that variety, building up a little bit of a schedule. So we have some seeds that we have started already. Now we're going on to the next phase that we're gonna do a lot of things that are gonna be going into the greenhouse yeah. uh, next month. And then in a few weeks, we will start some more stuff that will mm. harden off in the greenhouse and then we will plant them outside since we can't really plant outside until middle of April. April. Some people even say like the beginning of May, mm. middle of May, you're kind of safe. And that's that's the problem in Mongolia. If you're trying to plant things outside in the, in May to, yeah. to get it 
ready. So it's, it's tough. But anyway, what we're going to do today is we're just going to plant up some of the things that we're going to put in the greenhouse. We're going to mix up some soil mm -hmm. and get some things ready. Yeah, we have some seeds soaking in the water. The Ashley can show you. These are just some of the seeds that we put into water. These are all our varieties of chili seeds. We have some peri peri, some lemon drop, some habanero. We're putting it into a bit of tea and that will help it to germinate a lot faster. We're going to plant things over the next two or three days. We have worked out we're going to plant some beans that are going to go in the greenhouse. I think 11 varieties of tomatoes that we're going to plant today, some cucumbers, some peppers. We have a lot of the herbs that we're going to plant. I do have some herbs that we overwintered and we took cuttings of but there are some other herbs that we didn't get successfully done. So we're going to do a lot more basil this year. We're going to do some more uh, coriander and some parsley and different things. And then we're going to start a little bit more celery since that takes a really long time to grow. Then we will start all our onions and our carrots in about two weeks from now. So that is the good schedule. And we have a lot of berries, different types of berries that we want to start. But that's going to be a good two-year project. Since we're potting up everything in our kitchen, we're just going to do small batches of mix at a time. We're saving ourselves the hassle this year. We're not making our own potting mix. That we will do later, but we will start off with a simple, basic, pre-prepared potting soil. We had good success from this last year, so we want to give ourselves the best chance this year of not making any mistakes. So we're going to go with a pre-made potting soil. We're going to add some topsoil into it, mix it together. That's a perfect start, very easy to do. And then once we transplant, we will make our own soil mix that we can take our seedlings and transplant them into it. Good mixture. It's pretty much just peat moss, perlite, and a bit of soil. It works well as a potting soil. How many percent? 50-50. Should be okay. 50% in the bucket, 50% on the floor. <laughs> Day. Making for the new babies. Ah, uh, poo poo papa. Wow. Oh, see, nice soil, huh? That they're gonna put all the making the new plants. Oh, poo poo papa. <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 no. <laughs> what we actually did as well is we started a notebook that we can record exactly what we are planting, all the information about the process, so that we can learn. Yes. So we're going to plant up. Zula or me will write it all up. And we have these little sticks for labeling. We also have some labels. Always chilies oh, first. Yes. We're not sure if we got this all perfect, but we kind of deciding on what size containers to use. For the chilies and tomatoes, we're going a little bit bigger so that they can grow bigger before we have to transfer them. So we're using different sizes. So we're going to start with the chilies. We have 47 chili plants to plant. Seeds. Seeds. Hello, Flemmy. Hi. Oh, look who in truck. Look what the daddy doing. What daddy doing? Ha! Huh. What you got? Your truck. Look Look. Perfect. That can start to soak in from the bottom. It's uh, peri peri. Peri peri chili. Peri peri. Peri peri. So eight. So, and then uh, lemon drop. And next is five habanero chocolates. Cho. 
chocolate. Chocolate. I'm pl planting chocolate. This lane? This lane. Five, right? Mm -hmm. And the next one. Trademark name. Huh? It's the red, little red bottle of hot sauce that you buy everywhere, but you can't say the name. Why? Tabasco. <laughs> oh, Tabasco. Okay, shh. Shh. So how many? Five. A lot. Fifteen. Oh. For these chili seeds, now that we have everything in, we have water from underneath that is soaking up. I'm just going to lightly spray it one time and then for the rest of the germination period I'm actually going to underwater it from underneath so it doesn't get this fungus on top. So we just want to keep it, keep it moist and then we're going to just wrap it up. Okay. Look at the mess. Look at the mess. Okay, one down. Lots more. Hundreds to go. Hundreds to go. Or thousand to go. Guys, we have a lot more to do. We're just going to carry on for the rest of the evening and then we tomorrow going to carry on with all of this. Yes. Hey, baby. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Miss. 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 Okay, guys. Hello, Good night. Baby. <laughs> Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Hello, baby.